I think we've done the jobs. We've got gas. We've been to Carlos and got our tickets. We've got our SIM card. We've been shopping. Car we have spent over 300 <laughs> euros. Between Carrefour and Middles, because um, somebody likes his uh, uh, his wine. And we, so, like, so far I've got 17 litres of red wine to drink. Well, uh, and Claire, as you can see, is cooking, which is uh, very, very unusual. And tonight is Valentine's night. It is. It is. Bear with me. I need to get ready to strain, apparently. I don't cook. Tom's too tired because it's, what, about nine o'clock at night and we've got to be up at five to get to the uh, thing. He can be bothered to cook, so Cheers. I'm cooking. So we've got pasta and soup, basically. Mm. Cheers. Happy Valentine's. And happy birthday to my mum. So tomorrow morning, it's a 5.30 alarm. We need to leave her at 6.30. Six. Six. We need to be there at seven o'clock. It's a 20 minute drive, so it should be nothing, nothing much here in the morning on the road. Um, so hopefully the next thing you'll see is us driving to the port. That is a lot of lights for a morning. So when you first arrive at the port, the first booth you come to, somebody asks for your ticket, we showed them the um, voucher, um, they looked at it, wrote something down, waved us on. Then we went and parked up in the line with lots of other motorhomes. Everybody was having a little wander around. There's a couple of massive four by fours behind us and people were having a nosy at them. Then you go through to the next bit. Uh, we didn't say anything. They handed us three tickets, one for each of us and one for the van with all the details on it. So obviously we're on the system. Um, then the next bit is passport control and then they waved us through and we're starting to load. It'll be interesting to see how steep this ramp is. Holy. I should have filmed that. That's a steep incline. So we've pumped up the back. I would love to have known how close we were to the back. I'm coming in the middle here. We're going oh in this God. one. Yeah. Look at the excited look on Claire's face. That's Africa. That's Africa. It actually doesn't feel as steep coming off as it did going up. No. Ooh. You're driving in Morocco! I can't believe we've driven to Africa. They bless the rains down in Africa. No, you're right, I can't sing. <laughs> Our first few nights were in the seaside town of Vasilla, just two hours from Tangier Med Port. We've just seen our first camels on a, oh, I got inside of the sheep. Asilla Old Town is enclosed by well-preserved 15th century ramparts and gates and is well known for its street art. There are beautifully clean, narrow streets with traditional white and blue buildings. Tiny shops, coffee shops are plenty, and a bustling market running late into the night. We spent three nights here getting acclimatised to Morocco before heading south. Asilla is a very easy place for the first couple of days to sort of ease you into Moroccan van life. It isn't hassly. The campsite's good. It's uh, cheap and cheerful at about five quid a night. Um, there are electric, if you want electric hookup, you can have it. We didn't have it because we've got plenty of electric, of course. Um, and there's a toilet point. I don't think there's a water point. There's a couple of showers. It comes out boiling hot and when the water runs out, it's freezing. Um, and the controls for hot and cold are kind of non-existent. So, empty the loo, and uh, well, heading down the coast to wherever next. So we finally left, and Claire is driving in Africa, in Morocco. She's making little piles of bricks underneath her, as somebody's <laughs> already cut her up the once. She's already panicked at the first roundabout. Where are we going, where are we going? Just keep going straight. So we are heading to... South. 
<laughs> We're heading to south. Um, can, can, I, can I try, can I try? Is the general direction. We're heading to Rabat. But we're not actually going to drive in Rabat. We're just going to head somewhere nearby that we can get a train in. Apparently, according to Google Maps, it's three and a quarter hours. And we were watching Timmy's travels yesterday. And they said they were aiming for the same place three and a half hours. And by the look of the map, they ended up with about 20 minutes away from where we started. <laughs> so it's one of those, we're just going to end up where we end up. It's all part of the adventure. It's all about the detour. So far, I'm really enjoying this. It is a little bit like an obstacle course for Peggy. All we've done is a tiny little off-road. Uh, off-road. All we've done is a tiny little detour down to the seaside. We haven't, done, we haven't even got to that road yet. This oh. is still the main road. And if you look at it, uh, the tarmac's run out. Yes. We are on a dirt track uh, heading to the seaside for a cup of tea and some lunch. Here we go again. Uh, the tarmac runs out, uh, only a hundred yards. It's like somebody's dug it out to put a pipe in or something and just filled it in with mud. That's the local bus service. <laughs> After a long day of these dreadful roads, we reached our campsite in Kenitra, where we sampled our first Moroccan pastries. The next day, we kept heading south towards the capital. Lesson learned here was to pay for the toll roads that are new, smooth and very much faster. Welcome to Rabat. It is a beautiful hot sunny day and we've driven about an hour down the coast from the last place. I've got no idea really what's here. Claire's done the research and I haven't. All I know is it's currently the capital city of Morocco, the seventh biggest with a population of about half a million. There's a city the other side of the little river that's got a population of 1.2 million um, and this has been the capital since 19... 1912 when the French came here and made this the commercial centre and then it took over as the capital. Uh, before then basically all that was here was the Medina. Everything else is modern, hence why it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site because of the blend of the old and then the modern which is really modern. And the only thing we're aiming for, I'm trying to do, is to go and get our first Moroccan geocache, which is over that way somewhere. So that was a damn sight easier. Claire was reading for about 10 minutes of the instructions and doors. There's a picture of that door there and cross the road and gates of justice. And uh, my sat-nav took me to here, to this house. And right in front of it, there's a little um, box on the on the wall. So I just thought it's got to be there. The problem is, I'm too British. I'm too polite. I can't approach somebody else's house and start ferricking around in their property. Tom obviously um, has no problems with it. There it is. First Moroccan <laughs> geocache. Yeah. And it is geocache number. Oh, let's put it on there now. If that doesn't look like a Harry Potter type bank, I don't know what does. But look at the really wide street. Kind of looks like I'd expect to see Monaco. Palm trees, big wide streets, very French influenced buildings with a mosque at the end. Lovely, beautiful day, bright blue sky, fantastic buildings. Look at that, white shining against the blue. That is the mausoleum of Mohammed V. I've got to talk a little bit quieter, so this is the mausoleum for Mohammed V. Mohammed V was born in 1909 in Fez. He became the last Sultan of Morocco from 1927 to 1953 and then again from 1955 to 1957. He then became the first King of Morocco from 1957 to 1961. He played an instrumental role in securing the independence of Morocco from France and Spain, and he died in 1961 here in Rabat. 
this tower that we drove past on the way in really stands out. It is so different to absolutely everything else around here. It's actually over the other side of the river, so it's in Sale, not in Rabat. It's called Mohammed VI Tower. I think it's nearly finished. It is a mixture of luxury apartments and a commercial centre. It's 55 storeys high, 250 metres, and they say it's the third tallest building, or it will be the third tallest building in Africa. So I've just seen, <laughs> no, we didn't just see, I saw earlier there were four geocaches here in a loop, and I thought we were going to go and do the fourth one on the loop, but Claire decided to miss that one out, I didn't realise. So we just sat looking at Mohammed the fifth tomb and I clicked on it it's never been found so we've got two tickets for the tram that's going the other way we're going to jump on the tram to go to the botanical gardens to try and find a first to find in Morocco in the capital on Africa so yeah we're quite excited Claire's gagging for a cup of tea and sit down I went no chance <laughs> not I'm not leaving that geocache unleft it's been there for two weeks and nobody has found it yet so the chances are somebody's gonna find it by the time we get there well that's what Tom is worried about so we have to get on the tram and get over there but it's not this one it's the number one we want that's the number two so brand new really sleek looking my mate Gazza would love these <laughs> you have to pump your card There is something quite nice about walking through a tropical botanical gardens. It's really quite cool now, isn't it? Lovely. Cool, trees, and hopefully our geocache. That's the most important thing. So the hint was a hole a squirrel could live in at eye height. So there was a hole in the tree with a piece of uh, stone in it. So we're claiming that as a first to find, yes first to find in our fourth country. With a view like that, it's definitely worth the effort of driving here. What a fabulous view. Yes, Claire's eating yet again. We stopped for coffee and a drink. Now they brought us cakes, 10 dirham each, which is about 85p. But you are sat in the Medina, overlooking the sea in the capital. They used to be three quid each in London, so yum yum. Tastes good? Mm, they're almond. I don't like almond. It's really nice. Mm. It's amazing what a bit of sugar will do. Morning! Morning! We're in Agadir. You might have seen we had a wander around yesterday. Oh, hey. We're in Rabat, as you've just seen. This was our little spot last night. There's uh, two or three little uh, Italians there, they were partying till about nine o'clock and went to bed. There's us, there's nothing else in the car park. I was woken up by the dude in here, hollering at about six o'clock in the morning. Other than that, there's nothing here now, a few cars will come in. That is the gates to the Medina, the walls of the old Medina. Um, 1,440 dirhams a night. Yep. which is about £12 for a city centre park up. There's nothing there. There is a, a toilet that Claire used earlier and I popped in as well. It's like you said, it's a little bit like a Thai toilet. Looks really grubby, but it was actually really quite clean. The surface has been cleaned down. It's absolutely fine to use. It's probably one of the best toilets I've seen for weeks. So we're off geocaching down the coast towards Casablanca today. But before that, we're going to go and have a cup of coffee somewhere. So breakfast this morning is two cups of white coffee and a sausage roll. And I very much doubt it's going to be a Greg's pork sausage roll <laughs> as they don't have Greg's or pork here. Looking forward to it then. Looking forward to it. So after that lovely cup of coffee, we thought we'd have a quick walk through the Medina before we head out. But the thing I've noticed is just how clean the streets are. This was rammed last night, absolutely packed full of people. And there are there's bags there of rubbish that have been cleared up, but the streets aren't full of rubbish. It's incredibly clean. So we've popped in here because I wanted to see this man, Aziz, who's had this bookshop for something like 50 years. When he started selling books here, 
there were uh, illiteracy rate was 92 percent and now it's 30 percent so one in three still can't read he sits here all day long reading that red book there the red quran he shuts five days five times a day to go and pray and he read he has read he reckons about four thousand books and every book he says is a new life so he's lived four thousand lives incredible and all he does he sits there and reads some days he sells one or two books other days he sells nothing bit of a legend he's been here forever It's another beautiful day and Claire is driving in the middle of Rabat. She's Absolutely. scaring me and she's scaring herself. However, no, we are getting there. Everybody else is scaring me. I just nearly had a taxi try and run me off the road. After a day in the city, a couple of hours heading south and we found ourselves on the beach in Mohammedia. Unfortunately it rained for a couple of days so it's nice just to stop before we hit the next city. Well we've definitely been befriended by mum, this is possibly dad, and a pair of little tiny little puppies. Well, we don't really want dad here because uh, mum that needs to feed and we've got yeah. some bacon scraps. So maybe if you just give it to mum only yeah, I don't really want to, um, I don't want to fight against you. Look at these little puppies, aren't they gorgeous? There you go, just to prove van life isn't always happy and joyful. It's raining, having my hair cut. Claire's on the step indoors, and at the feet are the puppies. We've had two nights at Mohammed Mia. Mohammedia, I'll put it down here. There is a geocache we need, and it's on an island. That's the island. Now, at low tide you can cross it. Uh, high tide was about three hours ago, so we came thinking it might be able to get across. I'm not going, not wading through that, so we're going to have to wait an hour or so, but we're going on that island to get the next geocache. So we can't get to do the geocache, so we thought we'd come and see this man. Look at this van, making a coffee. Very enterprising. A little coffee in the back of the van. Looks good to me. Oh. Got one white, one black. Absolutely ripped off. Can you believe it? He wanted 13 dirhams for two coffees. That's like a pound and five or seven p or something. Mine was really good. Claire, on the other hand, spilt hers and she stained her fingers. Who is that strong? <laughs> they were nice though, weren't they? They were, they were good. I'll be awake all night now. We're waiting for that one little patch to clear. I'm daring Tom that he can run across it in a minute. Who's gonna lay bets as to it all going wrong? We didn't do the geocache in the end because the tide wasn't going to go out far enough. But on the way back, there must be a little coffee place about every 30 or 40 yards all the way along here. So every 10 or so feet from each other is these little tables and chairs where people obviously come out and sit and watch the waves have coffee. Families, couples, it's a lot, li lot more liberal here than I was expecting, but look at that. Good morning. I had a wonderful night's sleep. I oh, think. Dead. So I didn't get woken up. Well, actually, I did wake up. I woke up because it was too quiet last night, which is really strange. So we've come back to the geocache this morning on the island. As you can see, the tide's out. I don't know how much longer we would have had to wait yesterday. We couldn't be bothered. Mohammedia, this is called. Uh, we've had a wonderful three nights here. We got here late on the first night, and there's a little bit of noise. The second night, my god, the dogs barked for about three hours and partying. Last night was Friday night and we thought it would be really, really noisy and busy. I woke up at midnight because it was quiet. 
uh, almost too quiet. Uh, and then I woke up at two o'clock and there was not a noise. And that's where we're gonna go across. So we're gonna go, tide, low tide is another hour yet, but as you can see, the water does come up occasionally. And then last night, like I say, it was so incredibly quiet. So we're coming to do this geocache before the tide turns. Um, I don't want to get wet feet this morning. And then we're off to Casablanca. Play it again, Sam. This is some terrain to try and walk over. I don't know how well you can see this, but it's very jaggedy and quite awkward to find some foot positions. After a bit of a struggle, we got it! <laughs> Next geocache on the list down the, down the coast in Morocco. Claire's going to sign it and then Casablanca, here we come. Yep. As Tom has already mentioned, we're off to Casablanca in next week's video, but until then, please like this video and subscribe to our channel to follow along.